We are officially entering SummerSlam 2004. But before we get to that, just a friendly reminder that Blue Chew wants to sponsor your SummerSlam. If you want your partner to stay with you till death do you part, steal their heart, rock their world with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is the only chewable tablet that helps you have better sex. For more details, make sure to check out the link in the description box below. SummerSlam 2004 wasn't necessarily my cup of tea. There were a couple of matches and a couple of stories that I did enjoy, or at least brought back some memories. But for the most part, I didn't think that this show necessarily held up, again, compared to some of my faves. Now, spoiler alert, I have already gone ahead and started watching 2005, and that video is going to be out tomorrow. And let me tell you, it's already a huge difference from 2004. But let's go ahead and discuss what went down in terms of the major moments on the show. All right, so the highlight that I want to get started with is the storyline that I remember the most. And so that is Kane versus Matt Hardy. So even though I remember the storyline a whole lot, this story was messed up, guys. This is a horrible story, like awful. And I'm not just talking awful in terms of what was being implied in the storyline, but it was just awful storytelling that we got throughout the entire time. And it's crazy to think of some of the stories that we're going to be talking about for at least this year and for sure the next year regarding Lita. But 2004, Kane and Matt Hardy. So just to give you guys a brief rundown, as you all know, Matt Hardy was dating Lita. They were already, you know, had been together, I think at this point for like five years or whatever, right? And in this storyline, oh my God, it's so hard to even explain because when I first watched it the first time, I was very confused. Because basically, Lita said she was pregnant. And as she's telling Matt Hardy, she then reveals that it's Kane who's the father. Now, when I was young watching this, I thought, well, how did that happen? How did Kane and her and what? Does she like Kane? What, what's going on here? Did she cheat? I didn't really know how that came about. And watching it now... Were they implying, they essentially implied that he did inappropriate things to her that ended up making her become pregnant. And they never really like outright said it that I think. Instead, it was just sort of implied that he uh, had done stuff to her. And this story, guys, I don't know what I was doing watching this. I have no idea. But the worst part is that not only was that like implied that he had done something to Lita that ended up getting her pregnant, and I don't even want to get into the verbiage here, but <laughs> this is just a messed up story, guys. So basically, they end up having this till death do us part match, Kane and Matt. And the winner of this match is going to go on to get married with Lita. And Kane wants to marry her because he wants to own her. And apparently, he's also the father of her child. This is so messed up, guys. <laughs> this is messed up. So we have this match. The match is nothing. The match sucks, guys. And also, the way that they booked Matt Hardy this year and next year, it's the shits, guys. The utter shits. Like, you can tell, like, I don't think they liked Matt. I don't think they liked Matt Hardy, guys. Just some of his booking here in these next few years that we're going to be talking about, it's kind of a mess. And <laughs> I was at the wedding, the wedding between Kane and Lita that happened in Anaheim. And you guys all know, because I've said this a zillion freaking times, that I was a big Lita fan. So I was watching this, and I was just confused. I didn't know what I was supposed to be um, feeling. Obviously, I didn't want Lita to get married with Kane. Like, none of that ever made sense to me. And so I remember being at the wedding and thinking the entire time that something was going to happen so that she didn't marry Kane. But she ends up getting married with Kane. Like, it happens. Even though they sent Matt Hardy out there and he's supposedly coming to save her, he ends up getting put through a table or whatever. He literally gets, like, eliminated so fast from this scenario. Like, he does not come in in his white horse to save the love of his life. No. They booked him so awful in this match. So weak. 
And I'm like, why would you do that to poor Matt Hardy? And we'll talk more about how else they booked Matt next year. But <laughs> guys, this was so bad. This was such an awful storyline that wasn't even, I think, explained right. And then it's funny because I couldn't remember how this storyline ended. All I remembered was Gene Snitsky punting the baby and then that leading to him always saying it wasn't my fault and that's all i could remember like i could not remember what actually happened so of course i had to go down the well and find out that it was all in the end a miscarriage and i guess gene snitsky pushed lita and so Lita ended up losing the baby in a miscarriage. So I'm just confused because now I don't even know how we got Gene Snitsky to punting the baby. I'm trying to put all these pieces together, guys. Some of it is my memory. Some of it, I'm just trying to like watch random YouTube videos to put it all in line. <laughs> but it's a terrible storyline. Like they didn't do such a good job of explaining it, explaining it. So you almost have to like fill in the blanks yourself for some parts. Oh God, it's awful and the next highlight that i want to get into is eddie guerrero versus kurt angle finally something good on this show to talk about this was a rematch from the wrestlemania 20 match and i love this first of all i loved it because the way that it connected from what had happened at wrestlemania in their match and what ended up unfolding in this match eddie guerrero outsmarted kurt angle in their wrestlemania match he loosened up his boot so that when Kurt Angle put the ankle lock on him, he was able to slide out, catch Kurt Angle by surprise, get him in a roll up and get the win. So then since WrestleMania that year, all the way until SummerSlam, they had been uh, feuding with each other. And so they had been costing each other opportunities, whatever. So they finally get to this match here. And this match was so freaking good, guys. Kurt Angle, Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero were some of the people that just have had some of the best SummerSlam matches uh, every year. And that's honestly how I feel just like watching these back to back. They're so fresh in my mind now that their matches are always uh, some of the very best on the show. In this match, we see them take a page out of each other's books. Eddie locks in an ankle lock. Kurt gouges him in the eyes. Kurt kept getting Eddie in an ankle lock. And at one point, he just bends the ankle and puts weight on it. I thought that was very cool. Eventually, we end up seeing Kurt Angle pull out a pretty clever trick where not only had been... He not only had he had been attacking Eddie's ankle throughout the entire match, but he also ended up taking off his wrestling boot. And so this basically exposed his ankle a lot more so that when Kurt Angle locked in the ankle lock, it was more painful. And so Eddie eventually ends up tapping. But the back and forth and the buildup throughout this entire match, guys, this was so good. Just really good wrestling with a really good story within the match that also pertain to the feud so just good storytelling all around here with Eddie and with Kurt Angle now I wish I could continue saying that we were seeing more good storytelling but this next one guys oh this was bad Triple H and Eugene I of course will never forget when Triple H turned on Eugene because I hate to say this but I had no idea you guys know I grew up in a bubble I thought everything was real. I mean, I thought The Undertaker was really dead. Kane was really burnt. I thought that they were fighting the entire time backstage. I believed everything I saw. I had no idea that this was fake at the time. So don't laugh at me, all right? Do not laugh. So you can imagine when I saw Triple H turn on Eugene, I thought, what the? How could you do that? Like, how could you do that? I remember watching this as a kid and legitimately being upset. And now watching this as an adult, I mean, I'm, I'm looking back at this and I go, oh, I can't believe they really did this on TV. Like, oh, this is bad, right? Not only was it a bad story with bad implications, but it was also a bad, boring match. So on top of all of that, on top of everything, it wasn't even entertaining, at least not to me. Uh, back then, I was more so just heartbroken for Eugene. Now, watching this now, I was just thinking, cringe, cringe, cringe. And I also kept thinking about what a serious downfall this was. Because when we were talking about SummerSlam the year before, we had been talking about Triple H being champion, 
defending his title in an elimination chamber. We're talking about him taking out Goldberg, being in this match with big stars like Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho, etc. And now we're talking about him in a match with Eugene. And even before that, we can even talk, go even further than that. His match with Shawn Michaels, which we just talked about, that was such great, great stuff. And we go from all of that just in recent years to this. And then we had the Diva Dodgeball. And I completely forgot this happened, guys. I have zero memory of the Diva Dodgeball. Did not remember this at all. And so I'm watching this and I'm going, oh, maybe something entertaining will come out of it. It didn't. It did not. Team Diva lost, which was Trish Stratus's team. So then she attacks Victoria right afterwards. But they had so many great freaking wrestlers there. I mean, you had Gail Kim. You had Jazz. You had Molly Holly. You had Victoria. All of these girls there that could have easily been in some random match. But of course, different time periods. And we just weren't getting that. So instead, we had Diva Dodgeball. The next highlight that I need to get into is the Undertaker versus John Bradshaw Layfield for the WWE Championship. And all I have to say here is I really have not been impressed with the collection of Undertaker's SummerSlam matches. This is totally different from when I was doing my WrestleMania Rewind matches. When I was doing that, I felt like I had so much to say about the Undertaker and all of this. Now it's just like, oh, this match happened and it really wasn't that great. And honestly, like up until this point, like where we're at right now, 2004, the best SummerSlam match for The Undertaker was the one that he had with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that was back in 1998. Spoiler alert, though, we do get a way better Undertaker match the following year at SummerSlam. And on to our final match, the main event. Randy Orton makes history by becoming the youngest world champion in WWE after he defeated Benoit for the World Heavyweight Championship. This was, of course, a good main event where Randy Orton at one point looks like he's going to pass out from the sharpshooter that Benoit has locked in on him, but he keeps holding on, man. At one point, we see Benoit go for the flying headbutt, but Randy ends up getting his legs up, and Benoit straight up takes two feet straight to the face. Randy wins the title with the RKO out of nowhere. They shake hands, nice sportsmanship at the end of this, and thus begins Randy's first run as World Heavyweight Champion. And unfortunately, it doesn't last too long after this. So, best match of SummerSlam 2004. I absolutely, most definitely have to give it to Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero. That was the best wrestled match on the show with the best story, in my opinion. And then the worst match, I have to give it to Triple H versus Eugene because that was just god-awful. The MVP, of course, I have got to give it to Randy Orton for winning the World Heavyweight Championship and making history. As for the rating of the show, I got to give it a 6 out of 13. I just really didn't enjoy SummerSlam 2004. I thought that I've seen just a lot better, especially in these early 2000s SummerSlam. So this one just fell on the weaker side. But if you don't want to fall on the weaker side, make sure to get yourself some blue chew. Support our sponsors. The link is in the description box below. I'll catch you guys on the next episode chatting about SummerSlam 2005. And yes, that one was a million times better. I can't wait to talk about it with all of you here. Make sure to let me know what you guys felt about SummerSlam 2004 in the comments section below. Catch you guys on the next one.